hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel today guys i'll be checking out this interesting video from candice owens and it's titled a message to my jewish and muslim friends you guys i'm excited for this if you're yet to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and without much ado let's see what this video is all about Right, so you guys may have seen some of this on my Instagram stories this morning because I woke up and I was so frustrated and also incensed when I saw a clip circulating from our show and people were tagging me and saying stuff like this. Look at this Instagram post. This person writes, well done at Real Candace Owens. Keep confirming your true colors and you can go and join your BFF at Kanye West with your anti-Semitic <laughs> stance against Israel. And then you can see that they have taken a clip from the show. Obviously, it's completely out of context and that's the point of it. And they've even painted a clown face onto me. And then the person writes over that clip, clown Candace Owens, Israel's Super Bowl hostage ads were propaganda as Netanyahu bombed a refugee camp. Why would we call our rep to do something that has nothing to do with America? By the way, that is an actual quotation that I did say. Why would we call our reps to do something that has nothing to do with America? That, yeah. So just to recap, because as I said, obviously this was taken out of context. People don't know what show this is from. People also who are circling this clip don't listen to my podcast. And the purpose of them doing that sort of underhanded trick is to make them angry even if they don't really know necessarily what they're angry about. Now, for those of you that listen to my show, you know that as a regular beat, we constantly talk about the emotional engineering in our society, the emotional Amer engineering that's taking place in American society that's meant to make us want to support causes, whether it's at home, like you should feel bad for an illegal alien and we should be funding this even though it is to our detriment or and especially abroad. It gets especially senseless when we are being emotionally manipulated to want to support causes overseas. And I didn't support our money being sent to Afghanistan. I did not support our money being sent to Ukraine. I did not support, therefore, our money being sent to Israel. Mm -hmm. And I've especially been harsh when it comes to Ukraine. When that conflict broke out, don't forget, Ukraine was doing so much propaganda at that time, particularly Zelensky. Remember this photo? that I absolutely lambasted Zelensky with his wife for Vogue. What is that? Why are you on the cover of Vogue if you are in a very serious war? I can't, I you shouldn't can't even make imagine. time for this. And then, of course, we had the Associated Press, and he was all dressed up in army fatigues. Again, emotional manipulation. He's not fighting on the front lines. Why is he wearing army fatigues at all? Mm -hmm. Wear a suit. Billions and billions of dollars being sent there. And lastly, and this made me especially frustrated, when Zelensky appeared at the Grammys. What an absurdity. This is an American <laughs> entertainment show. Wow. It's supposed to be an entertainment what show, is it doing and it there? should be completely void of any sorts of overseas propaganda. Exactly. So, of course, in the context of how I feel about this sort of a thing, it makes perfect sense that I would say that NGOs and the Israeli government should not be creating ads telling us that we need to call our senators, call our congressmen, and demand more funding for Israel, demand mm -hmm. more support for Israel. That doesn't make sense. We are in America very simple yeah. you guys i totally agreed with what candice owens is saying in this video she calls out the ills of the society not minding who the message is directed at i don't see why america keeps sending money to these countries at war when the people at home need this money for some kind of fundings they say charity begins at home and you have to first of all be charitable to your citizens before you start sending millions and billions of dollars to these countries that are fighting let me know what you guys think about this particular one do you agree with candice owens or you are totally against her i see where candice is coming from and i'm in total support of this leave your thoughts down in the comment section and let's continue watching you guys so I want to tell you guys a couple of things about my childhood. By the way, these are just facts, and, I'm, and it's important that I share this with you uh, so I can make a very clear point to people that wish to take mm. me out of context. I grew up in what just happens to be a very Jewish town. It's just outside of New York City. It's Stamford, Connecticut. 
we therefore had a Jewish community center and I would go to a lot of my friends' birthday parties that they would host at that community center. My best friend in middle school just happened to be Jewish. Her name was Jessie. My best friend in high school just happened to be Jewish. Her name is Denise. We are still great friends. I was in her wedding. She was in mine. My best friend in college was also Jewish. Her name is Ashley. I am still friends with her and I would always go back with her to Massachusetts and celebrate Rosh Hashanah with her and her grandparents and her mother and her father, very close to them. Actually, I could say throughout my life, I have definitively done so many Rosh Hashanah dinners. It's, it's strange, honestly. I've spent, I've done more Rosh Hashanah dinners, I would say, than any person should that is not Jewish. When I got out of college, I had tons of debt, needed a job immediately, and I found one on the Upper East Side temporarily nannying for a family, a Jewish family, a very observant Jewish family, who sent their kids to a school that was called Rodef Shalom. Yes, this meant also that every Friday I was there for their Shabbat dinners. My best friend at that time was a girl named Jordana, also Jewish, also someone that I spent Rosh Hashanah dinner with, and I was also dating a man, not kidding, for two years, and I lived with him. I don't advocate for that now, young ladies, but I lived with my boyfriend at the time, and he was a Jewish man, and we had mezuzahs on every door mm -hmm. in our apartment. Then I got a job, a real-world job, working in private equity for four years. I happened to work at a firm, a small firm that was run by two Jewish men. And I say all the time how grateful I am for those experiences. It was my first real opportunity in life because I was able to work myself out of student loan debt. I was able to learn about finance, crucial part of my upbringing. And also just admiring the success that they had was very motivating to me, seeing them take a chance on themselves. They were two guys out of Goldman Sachs who were taking a chance on themselves in their own private equity firm. And they worked so diligently and so hard. And I knew, I wanna, I wanna mimic this. This is, this is incredible. I also was able to travel the world uh, doing other things for one of the partners of the firm. And I got to see Europe. It just, it, it transformed me. Stepping outside of your own country on somebody else's dime, what an opportunity. It, it changed who I am and it changed my philosophies in life, really. I would say it's a big reason why I am a conservative today. But the point that I want to make is throughout my entire life, so many Jewish people, I had never heard any of those individuals that I just mentioned refer to someone as an anti-Semite or refer mm. to someone as a Jew hater. Actually, Looking back, all of them had pretty good lives, so why would they do that? Why would they want to victimize themselves or refer to people that were treating them well as something that they're not? I had never seen that before in my entire life, right, until I got oh. into politics. And I gotta be honest, I didn't understand it at first. I was, I was trying to reconcile the Jewish people that I grew up with and who I love and who are my friends and who are my ex-boyfriend, I guess you would say, with this sort of DC Jew who was using these words, not because they believed that what they were hearing was actually anti-Semitism or Jew hating, but to basically silence people. They were threatening people. What I started to recognize and what I now understand is that just like black people are not a monolith, mm -hmm. Jewish people are not a monolith. There are all different types of Jewish people. And this particular people that I've been talking about, that I'm talking about right now, represent a fringe minority of Jewish people that want nothing more than political power. It is just like Black Lives Matter. These people are ultimately Marxists, okay? And when Black Lives Matter was going around calling everybody racist, it was this implicit threat to white people. Do what we say, do what we want, mm -hmm. or we will ruin your life. That was the intention. We will ruin your effing life by smearing and libeling you and making other black people who actually aren't radicals, believe that you are in fact racist. That is the two-pronged approach, because why else would you do this? Why else would you refer to someone who is so clearly and evidentially not mm -hmm. a Jew That's hater true. as one? Because you want power. You want to also make Jewish people paranoid, right? You start using words like the Holocaust is gonna be back. And, and of course, if you're a Jewish person, you hear that, you, you wanna go, oh my gosh, like what is it? What should we be fighting? I want, I, we gotta fight yeah. that thing because I don't want another Holocaust. It's the same thing with BLM, right? You, you, they go to black people and they freak them out. And they say, oh my gosh, you got to join our movement or slavery is going to be back. We're going to be back in chains. Yeah. Of course, that's not reality. That's not real. That is emotional manipulation and the worst kind. It's evil is what it is. 
you guys candice owens once again is right and i applaud her for her bravery because it only takes someone who is brave to say the kind of thing that candice says let me know what you guys think about this and i really love listening to candice she makes a lot of sense in her video and she is always peeling fat let me know what you guys think leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and let's wrap this video up these individuals are evil marxists they do underhanded things underhanded tactics to freak people out and to ultimately cause division right their goal yeah, is that they are willing to hurt school. regular, hardworking Jewish Americans so that they can gain political power. That's what they're doing. Again, these people are Marxists, and I reserve such disdain for these individuals. I don't hate Jewish people. I hate bad people, and these people are yeah. bad. And mm. Jewish people, I want to invite you to call these people out in the same way that when my community had rot in it, I was willing to call them out, right? I said BLM is a Marxist organization. Ultimately, they are going to hurt the black community and inspire people to actually feel racism because you're constantly threatening them. You're not allowing them to speak. You're not allowing them to say what they think without trying to ruin their lives. Yeah, this is going to be the end result if Jewish people don't start standing up to these people that are behaving like monsters in your community. They shouldn't do it. We all should have the right to weed out bad people in our community because exactly. on the left and on the right, there are bad people. Bad people, yeah. And ultimately, what their goal is, is submission. Basically, mm. what these people are saying is you will submit to our political philosophy or I will ruin your life, Candace. Now, I want to be very clear on what my political philosophy is because I feel like it's not a very difficult one to comprehend. So I'm going to at first point to my colleague Matt Walsh's tweet. He wrote this on t Twitter. Sorry, I should say X yesterday. He wrote, foreign aid, by definition is taxation without representation. Taxpayers are funding foreign governments without any say in how the funds are used. This country was literally formed to stop that sort of injustice. The whole system of foreign aid is corrupt, immoral, and evil. He goes on and he writes, it should fill you with rage to think that food is being taken off of your children's plates and sent directly to foreign bureaucrats to be used however they see fit in ways that will not remotely benefit you or your family. The mm. whole thing is completely insane. I can't believe anyone supports it. I certainly do not support it, least of all when it makes zero economic sense. So I would now like to invite you to the tweets of Congressman Thomas Massey. He wrote this, the national debt is increasing at 318 million per an hour. That what? means the debt is piling up at about $1 per an hour per a US citizen, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Imagine trying to work off this debt. He then shows a video wow. of just how quickly Americans are going into debt. Look at this video, it's crazy. There it is. That's the U.S. national debt, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to be clear, I can barely say that number. It almost gives me numerical dyslexia. That's how long it's gotten. You should be outraged that that number keeps going up because people want to send money overseas. Uh, yeah. You should be outraged that they're trying to pull out your heartstrings when, listen, maybe I would be open to sending money overseas if I didn't look around me and see America in full decline. If I walked through neighborhoods and everything was perfectly paved and people were mowing and waving and everything looked clean and normal and we had a low crime incidence and our borders were secured, maybe you could bring me to the point where I say, you know what, we have so much that we should share it for things that we believe matter in our country. Yeah. But that isn't the circumstance right now. Mm -hmm. Thomas Massey also authored this tweet. He wrote, the speaker just announced that next week the House will vote on a clean bill to send Israel $14.3 billion. Israel has wow. a lower debt to GDP ratio than the United States. This spending package has no offsets, so it will increase our debt by $14.3 billion plus interest. Wow. That makes zero economic sense. Exactly. As I said earlier on Instagram, this would be like basically I have $1 million in my account. You have $9 in your account and I come to you to borrow some money. That would be foolish. That would be stupid. So why aren't we applying that economic common sense when it comes to sending money overseas? Hmm. Not wanting to do that is 
like I said, common sense. It is not anti-Semitism. Yeah, that's true. And so I want to be very clear, by the way, on some other aspects of this. The implicit threat always when you get into politics is that you are not allowed to have any nuance. You have to be for something or against something. I will never, ever, ever be that person. I think, as you've heard me say on this show, that it is really sad that there are Israeli families that are missing. Of course, that are, it's sad because they're innocent civilians and they shouldn't be involved in a conflict. Yeah. It also pulls at my heartstrings. It makes me cry when I see the footage all over Twitter of Palestinian children that are being bombed into oblivion. When I see sure. they're missing parts of their body and this implicit threat. Don't say it's sad. You're not allowed to say it's sad. It is sad. Of course it's sad. What kind of a monster are you? If you don't think children being blown up is sad, you, you become what you hate, right? Hmm. You, you are literally no longer a good person. If you see a child that is growing up in that sort of existence anywhere and you feel nothing, that you feel that they somehow deserve it because of the actions of their government, really, right? We have no say over what our government is doing. If one yeah. day a group raises up and decides to bomb America, could you imagine if people said, it's not sad, American children are dying. It's just not sad at all. Again, I am not a coward. So to those people that routinely take me out of context and want to call me names, I want you to know that I literally do not give a <laughs> You are never going to control Candace Owens. Your actions are futile. Exactly. You mean nothing to me. I reserve hatred and disdain for you. I think you're psychopaths. And what I wish to say to you, utter psychopaths, is this. Israeli children, young children, they have dreams. They don't want to be at yeah. war forever for the rest of their exactly. lives. Young, innocent Palestinian children, they have dreams too. And what they are growing up in is madness. And it is sad. But guess what? Sure. American children have dreams also. Yeah. And what we are seeing right now is not good for the future for those children. I am unapologetically America first. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Wow, you guys, that was such a deep one coming from Candice Owens. She really spoke volumes in this video and everything she said really touched me. It's really the last part of this video. No child prays to grow up and experience war, whether you are American, whether you are Israeli or you are a Palestinian. No child absolutely wants war. No one prays to be bombed to death in their homes or in their country because of the decisions of the government. Let me know what you guys think. This really touched me and I hope that all of this come to an end very soon. Because a lot of children who are supposed to be the leaders of tomorrow have had their life snatched out of them and this is so pathetic. Let me know what you guys think about this video from Candice Owens. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.